Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <laughs> Before we begin, we would like to go over some important reminders. Please silence your cell phones. This evening's ceremony is being video recorded and a link will be shared with you to download at your convenience so there's no need to watch the night through your devices. Photographs are also being taken and will be posted on our campus Instagram, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. The remaining family photos will be taken immediately after the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce our head of school, Dr. Jennifer Mon. Good evening. On behalf of our entire community, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2023 commencement ceremony for our eighth grade class. This is a momentous day, and I know I speak for your parents, families, and faculty when I say we marvel at how much you've accomplished, not just this year, but for so many of you, 10 years in our special North Tustin community. Before we continue, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge our graduates' families for all the support that they have provided. The countless hours spent driving to and from school, trips to sporting events, debate, pentathlon, bake sales, class parties, just to name a few. Your families have been instrumental in getting you to where you are today. I wanna thank our middle school educators who have been integral to the success of our students and laying the foundation to get you to the stage today. They are trusted, committed student and family advocates, and we thank them for their continued support. While you may not know it, your teachers are and always will be your biggest cheerleaders. From their first day, or from your first day of sixth grade to this promotion, your teachers have been there to push you across the finish line. Next, I'd like to thank Mr. Clovis. Mr. Clovis helped usher our eighth grader to the final stretch of the school year. We're so thankful for his time and energy and for all that he does. Now to our eighth graders, the reason why we are all here. 
I've been in awe of your many talents, from leading our inaugural Fairmont families as eighth grade leaders, to ASB's endless support for our school community, to the debate team's success and domination in competition. These examples are but a few of the incredible feats of this class. All of you know that being an Eagle is all about the Fairmont Code. We focus on respect, responsibility, and kindness. We have no doubt that your children are Eagles through and through, and more than ready to take all of their newly acquired skills to high school and beyond, where they will continue to thrive. This year, perhaps more than years past, we have focused much attention on our beloved mascot, Eddie the Eagle. Eddie is more than a mascot, but a representation of what we aim to impart in our students. Bear with me for a moment as I regale you with facts about our mascot, Eddie, so you can understand where I'm going with this message. Eagles are fiercely loyal and family-oriented. They have incredible eyesight and can spot prey up to three miles away. Their vision is five times greater than humans, and they can even see ultraviolet light. Whereas most birds fly to shelter during, during storms, eagles fly into it, flying above the storm, and can reach altitudes up to 15,000 feet. Eagles use updrafts and downdrafts to push through to the other side of the storm, navigating chaos. An eagle earns its honor from the storms it endures. You will surely face hardships and challenges. We all do, but remember not to look down. It's an impossible view. Fly like an eagle and be open to the unlimited possibilities that we hold for you. Allow Eddie the Eagle to serve as a reminder of where you have come from and where you are going. This is truly a special class of graduates, and we know you are all future leaders. Congratulations, class of 2023. No matter what, we are all connected, and there will always be a home for you at North Tustin. Congratulations. Next, it's my pleasure to introduce a leader who has many roles at Fairmont Schools and is now the head of learning and learning infrastructure, Mr. Chad Jackson. I guess this is the right podium. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon with all of you this evening. I'm glad the weather has cooperated. But if not, clearly I have a tent over me, as do the graduates, so I'm okay with that. 70 years ago, my grandfather, Kenneth W. Bolt, saw a glaring need in Orange County for a new school. At a time of major post-war growth in Orange County in Southern California, he founded Fairmont to fill that need. For the first 40 years of its existence, Fairmont <clears throat> educated kindergarten through eighth grade students, preparing them for high school, college, and life. 30 years ago, my father, David Jackson, after attending so many eighth grade graduations like this one, saw a need for something different than the parochial schools that the majority of our students were attending. He saw a need for high school centered around academic rigor yet offering athletics, arts, and clubs that our students wanted, a place where all would feel welcomed, but high academic achievement was the foundation. Thus, Fairmont Prep was born. Now, education has evolved pretty significantly since those early days of Fairmont. Gone are the McGuffey readers and corporal punishment. Yes, we did have corporal punishment back then. Those things are gone. And we've given way to things like electronic devices with educational apps and artificial intelligence. And speaking of artificial intelligence, the Center for Safe, what is it called? The Center for AI Safety issued a statement just a few hours ago. And the statement basically <coughs> Uh, said this, mitigated, it says mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other social, societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. Wow, that's a pretty strong statement. I want to talk about AI a little bit. In fact, 
if I'm being transparent here, the next part of my speech was written by Chat GPT. <laughs> but it's really good stuff. So listen. Much like AI, any tool, uh, much like any tool, AI is the only is only as powerful as the hands that wield it. As the great Uncle Ben of Spider-Man fame once said, quote, with great power comes great responsibility, end quote. And with that, I present you three lessons that AI has taught us that can also serve as valuable guideposts for your lives ahead. So I'm talking to you guys. First, embrace the power of collaboration and diversity. AI has shown us that many solutions can come from the collaboration between humans and machines, as well as from a diverse set of perspectives. As you venture into the world, remember that teamwork and inclusivity are key. By working together and valuing the unique insights of each individual, we can create a future that is rich, dynamic, and truly extraordinary. Second, never stop learning. Many AI systems are built on the foundation of continuous learning. In much the same way, you must embrace a growth mindset as you navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. The knowledge you've gained thus far is invaluable, but it is just the beginning. Stay curious, stay humble, and always be open to the lessons that life has to teach. Finally, Basic logic, or excuse me, balance logic with empathy. While AI can process vast amounts of data to make, and make calculated decisions, it cannot replace the human touch. As you go forth, remember that your empathy, compassion, and emotional intelligence are what set you apart. Strive to be both logical and kind, and never underestimate the power of your humanity. Congratulations. Fairmont North Testing Class of 2023. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Next, our ASB president, Ava Hoover, would like to thank a few people who have made a difference in the lives of the class of 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, esteemed faculty, and fellow graduates. Today we gather here to celebrate not only our accomplishments, but also the incredible journey we have had together. It is an honor for me to stand before you as the ASB president representing our incredible student body. First and foremost, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Mrs. Kim, our extraordinary ASB coordinator. Mrs. Kim. Your dedication, passion, and wavering support have been the driving force behind our successful school year. Mrs. Kim is one of my favorite people and someone I will always remember. She would walk into a room, always with new thoughts and ideas, and leave the room with everyone feeling confident and ready to take on the new task ahead. Her belief in our abilities has given us the opportunity to reach new heights and to the value of teamwork. Thank you for shaping us into the leaders we are today. I would also like to extend a heartfelt appreciation to my ASB cabinet. Every person played a huge role in contributing to ASB, and I could not have done it alone. This year we've had a lot of people behind the scenes, which made everything really fun and easy to plan. I would like to thank Sophia Patel, Nicole, Nicole Bow, and Mindy Trin for all the little things they helped me with. Though small, they really made a difference in ASB this year. I would also like to thank Mahika Singh, Camille Kulan, and Diva Sarhangajad for being a vital role in ASB this year. With all these events came a lot of advertising to make sure that most people would enjoy the experiences that ASB would provide. All the flyers you would see around our campus were done by our public relations officers, Nicole Bow and Serene Cooney. Serene Pony also was in charge of doing Eagle News this year and went above all expectations. The next people I would like to thank are Adi Rodriguez and Nishka Singh, who are incredible activity coordinators this year. Without them, ASB would truly be nothing. Their tireless efforts in organizing and engaging activities from bake sales to dances have brought our student body together, and most of all, brought fun activities to the school for the elementary students to remember forever. Their creativity, enthusiasm, and attention to detail made every event a memorable experience. To my fellow graduates, we've overcome numerous challenges, embraced countless opportunities, and forged lasting friendships throughout our time here. Each one of us has contributed to the tapestry of our school, leaving a mark that will forever be remembered. As we embark on the next chapter of our lives, let us carry the lessons we have learned, the memories we've made, and the bonds we have formed. 
We owe a debt of gratitude to our family, teachers, and mentors who have supported us on this incredible journey. Their love, guidance, and encouragement have shaped us into the individuals we are today. Let us take a moment to acknowledge and thank them for their unwavering belief in us. Congratulations, class of 2023. One last thanks to all of ASV and Mrs. Kim for your support and dedication to our success. Today we celebrate not only our accomplishments, but also the incredible team behind them. May our futures be bright and may we continue to make a positive impact on the world. Thank you and congratulations once again. Thank you, Ava. Oh, that's really loud. Thank you, Ava. And now I'd like to present the class gift. May Addy and Diva please join me at the mic. once said, creativity is contagious. Pass it on. This year, many new opportunities and experiences were brought to this campus. These new opportunities that showed up gave us more responsibility towards our student lives. A few examples include Fairmont families, ASB roles, as well as being leaders and role models on this campus. Fairmont families, as well as some of our ASB roles, brought in leadership skills that we will carry on into the future. We have learned how to communicate with the lower grades and how to compromise. With this in mind, our eighth grade year brought us many new insight and skills, which makes us our most important year of high school, or middle school, right now. <laughs> Eighth grade is a very vital year of our lives because it is a period of time that prepares you before your transition into high school. When thinking about the class donation, we, as the class of 2023, wanted to leave a long-lasting imprint of creativity, imagination, and most of all, color before you begin your next chapter. We wanted to leave something that eighth graders can enjoy every day as they walk into school. Something to leave that would be eye-catching while also bringing peace to the mind. We believe that our gift will bring positivity to the future classes. So with that in mind, we'd like to introduce our eighth grade gift of 2023. We would, would everyone please do a drum roll? Our eighth grade gift from the class of 2023 are custom painted lockers for the eighth graders of next year. We chose this gift because being an eighth grader is a big step in becoming a person, because you're the oldest of middle school, but most of all, you made it all the way this far as a student of Fairmont. With these lockers, the future eighth graders to come would feel as they should, as locker royalty. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce to you a visionary leader whose love for Fairmont schools is surpassed only by his love for Fairmont students, our chairman, Mr. David Jackson. Thank you, Ava. Uh, it's, I'm looking through, I can see a lot of the Hoovers out there. Yep. I've known you since before you were born. I've known your parents since they were born. And I've known your grandparents since we were first married over 50 years ago. And uh, I know your grandma is watching from above. One special lady. What a privilege it is for me to be with you <clears throat> celebrating this wonderful milestone You've conquered the hallways of middle school and now stand on the brink of yet another grand adventure, high school. I hope you enjoyed every moment of your walk through promotion earlier today. Therefore, you shouldn't be making any mistakes, right? I hope that tonight's formal prom promotion is something that you will remember with great fondness for many years to come. Looking at all of you right now brings a smile to my face. So many memories come flooding back. It seems like just yesterday that many of you were beginning your journey at Fairmont in preschool classrooms, on the playground, and you all stayed in spite of the fact that my grandson Jackson was here these, all of these years. <laughs> but actually, I've got a feeling that now at this point, 
a lot of the girls that enrolled and stayed is because Jackson is still here. <laughs> My heart is dreaming with pride, and I'm filled with anticipation about the amazing things I know you will accomplish in high school. At this time, I'd like to share with you one of my traditions that's been going for over 40 some years of honoring our legacy students. These are the students that have been with us and that we've grown up before our very eyes, beginning their time in preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, from first to fifth grade, and junior high school. When I announce your name and your grade, or when, I, when I announce your grade, would you please that you started at Fairmont? So I'll get that straight. I've only been doing it for 40 some years, but I just didn't write it right. When I announce the grade level, would you please stand so we can recognize you and stay standing until I've announced for all of you. So those of you that started in preschool, would you please stand? Those that started in kindergarten, join them. First grade. Second grade. Third grade. Fourth grade. Fifth grade. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. <laughs> I've always got to look around, especially in high school, because I always find one or two that are still sitting there going, when did you join us? <laughs> Thank you all very much. Now, you can be seated now. Now comes time for the other fun one. <clears throat> and I, I've talked to and get information from your teachers from clear back in preschool, kindergarten, and so on and your administrators to try and put some of these stories together. I don't hope not any of you are going to get embarrassed, except maybe Jackson, but that's okay. <laughs> Ethan, your teachers have said you will be successful at anything you do. Mrs. Patterson, your junior high teacher, hopes you go into the culinary arts. She never missed Mr. Trent's Tournament of Houses of Cooking class because she knew that lunch was going to be excellent with you as the lead chef. I'm thinking that maybe we should go ahead and contract with you to be our celebrity cook at uh, Fairmont Prep and at many of the other different events. Would that be all right? Uh, I'll be in touch. John, I've heard you are quite the singer and that your rendition of Happy Birthday is a crowd pleaser. Is that right? Do all of you agree or no? Uh-oh. Because I was going to ask him if he would join me when I sing every, uh, almost every day to all of our high school graduates when I call them on their birthdays. But you, you got you to tune in with me, so we'll talk about it. Addie, Mrs. Kim said you have always had great coordinating skills when it comes to big events. I heard you were even that you even coordinated bake sales and dances at North Tustin. That sounds pretty fantastic, and I've heard some pretty good remarks about how well they went. So I'm thinking, I'm just continuing to recruit. I'm gonna probably have you work with us to help coordinate maybe next year's prep graduation, and each year after that, and especially maybe four years from now. Be ready for my call. Ava. As I've already stated, you're, you and your family are pretty special to me. You put your aim and skills to good use during your time here at North Tustin. Not only were you ASB president at North Tustin, which is quite an accomplishment, but you were also able to peg Mrs. Minash in the head during a student versus teacher dodgeball game. I'm sure she'll never forget that. I'm going to be sure to watch when you're around. Mrs. Excuse me, Evan, Mrs. Patterson said that during a persuasive speech in English, you passionately talked about how middle school students can seek validation from outside factors 
which can then have a negative impact on their self-worth. You went on to make the very profound point that middle school is about not just becoming a stronger student, but a stronger person who learns skills and finds worth from within. She was so impressed that you articulated this so beautifully, and you did this all in front of all the classmates. <clears throat> this will serve you well in high school and beyond, and I'm sure that uh, we'll hear more about you in the future. Frank, apparently you used to ask, you used to always sneak your backpack into room 119 instead of using your locker. Your commitment to seeing if you could get it across the threshold and keep it inside there for the duration of the class period without getting caught became a tradition of the eighth period, I understand. I don't know whether to be impressed by your stealthy technique or worried. <laughs> High school should be fun. We'll see how well you do there. Excuse me. Yassine, Mrs. Frazier, your first grade teacher, shared how delighted she was to see you one day at Big Five buying soccer shoes. <clears throat> and you were, buying, you were buying them by yourself in first grade? It's really amazing. <clears throat> She's so happy to see that you still love soccer so much. I bet you're really good at soccer now. Mrs. Minaj said, I was very pleased when Yasin stepped into my fifth grade classroom this year as I was giving my class a talking to me. And you said strongly to the class, you better respect Mrs. Limish Limish I can't even say it, Minash, and change your attitude. They did, she said, and she wants to thank you again very much. So, sounds like, uh, Learning to go to Big Five at first grade really helped you to just take charge wherever you go. <laughs> Camille, Mrs. Patterson said your southern accent as you read To Kill a Mockingbird added a bit of zest to Nate, to, excuse me, to literature class. Class was never boring with you in it. I wonder why sometimes. Your second grade teacher, Mrs. Winslow, said you would often tell everyone Less drama, please. <laughs> but every statement of yours often involved a dramatic gasp in response. Ms. Fraser said you were such a self-assured first grader who knew what you wanted and did not hesitate to go after it. Your leadership skills early on were outstanding and continue to this day as you pursue activities on and off campus to better your community. I know you will continue to do amazing things with that kind of attitude and belief in yourself. Thank you. Bennett, Mr. Foley said even though you and Frank were besties in his class, you and Frank still took it out on each other, but without really hurting anyone, when you and Frank designed a whack-a-mole game project for class, but with each other's heads pictured on the mole heads, you loved playing that game, I understand. You loved your positive attitude and your, your shy sense of humor also. Last but not least, and I didn't forget you, Jackson. <laughs> Mrs. Kim said you would always ask for a pencil so often that maybe we thought you were stocking them up to sell them. I started to worry, maybe I talked to him too much about business ideas. <laughs> I know that that was just your way of sharpening yourself into the great young man that I've seen you become. Remembering each time you, you remember each time you use a pencil, you leave a mark. I am so proud of the mark that you've left here and the mark I know you're going to leave in the future. Now, I didn't embarrass you tonight, did I? Much. So I want to ask for, continue for another rematch at Pool, because you've embarrassed me six times out of 
out of eight. And I need, I need time to get back at you. He's quite a good pool player. I wish I could share many more stories about all these eighth graders, but I would be in trouble with my wife and everybody else for spending way too much time. In closing, let me say congratulations to our eighth graders. I'm so proud of you and hope that you have a wonderful summer. To you, North Tustin teachers and administrators, thank you once more for the loving care and the loving work that you put into every day as you work with these kids, not just taught them, but show them by example and help them to believe in themselves so well that I know they're going to be some of the best, best people, best students, best teachers in the future, best business people, whatever they decide to get into, they're gonna be the best at it. And I'm really happy and proud of that. And so proud of what all of you have done, what you as parents and the administrators have done to help these kids get to where they are in life. And where they're going to go is just gonna be even more amazing. I do love this school and I love every one of you. I don't get to know you as well as I would like to, but I can feel how, how wonderful you are and I love seeing you all over the place and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Clovis will now introduce our first of four valedictorians. Yes, you heard that right. There are four valedictorians today. <laughs> Just so you have a little idea here, all of our four valedictorians finished their time here at North Tustin with a 4.53 GPA. <laughs> Yeah, big round of applause. They received all A pluses in their non-honors courses and A's or A pluses in all of their honors courses. So congratulations, guys, for all of your hard work. Our first valedictorian today is Mr. Eli Lundy. Mr. Lundy joined us at North Tustin campus in junior kindergarten in 2013. As he raised up before, he did start at Fairmont as a preschool student. I saw a picture earlier today from Miss Anderson, and let's just say, oh, he's very cute, very cute. <laughs> Ever since then, Eli has been on a path of excellence. Between high test scores and, ex and excellence on most sports field, Eli has been a consummate professional during his time at North Tustin. Please help me welcome Mr. Eli Lundy. <laughs> Throughout all my years at Fairmont, I have built bonds that will last a lifetime and created memories that I will never forget. Whether that be my early days of kindergarten back in 2014, where we all sang patriotic songs in Miss Anderson's class, or the final days of our eighth grade year, where one of us lost a couple inches of height after getting a buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, every day has been special here on the North Tustin campus, and every day has been filled with such amazing memories. Each year, the teachers and classmates that I've had the privilege to spend time with have shaped my personality and defined my character. Now today, I hope to share with you two elements of success that have molded me into a 14-year-old who is ready to start my high school journey in the fall. So the first thing I want to talk about today is how my friends have made a difference in my life. I like to think of my Fairmont career as a painting. A painting formed by the colors of influence, inspiration, and connection that I have gathered from my friends along the way. As I made my way through elementary and middle school, I began to notice massive changes in my character. 
I began to notice that some of the unique colors on my friend's canvas were in fact blending in to my own. And without the people I've been surrounded by for 11 years here at Fairmont, my colors would have painted a completely different picture. As you go into high school, you will be introduced to many new kids beyond just the 26 that you had in eighth grade. So choose your friend groups wisely. If you surround yourself with supportive friends, your painting will begin to look vibrant and bright. But if you surround yourself with negative friends, your painting may begin to look a little bit murky. So I leave you with this. Make sure the people you spend time with actually care about you and not just themselves. And thank you to my best friends here at Fairmont for, who have helped me make, helped make me a better person. And the second thing I want to talk about today is an important motto that will help us as we begin our journey into high school. Don't let the little things pass you by. High school will bring long hours of homework, stressful activities that will fill your schedule, and sports that will require a lot of dedication. But in this, jum in this jumble of academics and athletics, make sure you find time to enjoy the little things. For me, that means going to the park and playing a game of pickleball with my dad. For me, that means participating in family card game night. And for me, that means selling baseball cards with my grandpa. While these may seem like frivolous activities that aren't necessary in your life, the little moments invite us to live in the present. The little moments allow us to savor the riches of each passing moment, and they help us find joy in even the smallest of details. So guys, don't forget to step back every once in a while, take a break from the serious tasks, and find time to spend with family and to enjoy yourself. Now the coming years will challenge our character and force us outside of our comfort zone. With a new cohort of high schoolers, more, diffi more difficult curriculums, and the pressure of our adult life on the horizon, the next four years will hold a heavy burden. However, if you surround yourself with caring friends, and if you learn how to enjoy the little things, these next four years will be the best ones of your life. Now I'd like to say a few thank yous before I end my speech today. Thank you to my parents over there in the back right. Mom and Dad, I appreciate how much you've supported me in my journey. Without you, I would not be at the podium today. So thank you to my mom and dad, Paula and Corey. Thank you to both sets of grandparents, both the Lundies who are on a cruise right now, and the, Mo uh, and the Okamotos who are right there with us today. The beautiful one in the blue, the blue jacket and the other beautiful, beautiful one in the blue shirt. <laughs> Thank you to my Aunt Janet and my Aunt Amy. My Aunt Amy is right there in the back. None of them look a day over 25. They're the youngest people I've ever seen. You won't even guess their age, so don't even try. And finally, guys, thank you to the Fairmont staff, Dr. Ma and Mr. Clovis. Thank you to the Fairmont faculty right there in the front row. And last but not least, the graduating class of 2023. Go Eagles and go Huskies next year. <laughs> Our second valedictorian today is Ms. Claire Yu. Claire joined the North Tustin campus for fourth grade. Besides being at the top of her class, Claire is also an incredible ice skater who spends most days on the rink. Please help me welcome Ms. Claire Yu. Good evening, everyone. For all of us here right now, today might seem like the end of a story, the conclusion to our years of being in class together. However, I see today as the end of only one chapter, because at the same time, a brand new chapter of our lives is about to unfold. We've reached the culmination of years of hard work, late nights, and countless sacrifices. This moment, this milestone, represents not only an end, but also a beginning, an opportunity for us to spread our wings and soar into the boundless sky of possibilities. Looking back, we can't help reminisce about the remarkable journey we've undertaken. 
Each and every one of us has walked through that very door at one point, uncertain of what awaited us. But at Fairmont, we all grew intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. We discovered our passions, unearthed hidden talents, and forged lifelong friendships. The road to this day has been paved with challenges, obstacles that tested our resilience and strength. We've struggled with difficult tests, but that only taught us to work harder and to never stop pushing ourselves past our limits. We've experienced difficulties working together, finishing the projects, but that only strengthened our ability to collaborate and communicate with one another. We've experienced, um, we were the first eighth graders to take on the responsibility to Fairmont families, and I think we handled that well enough. We experienced stressful nights before exams, wrestled with self-doubt, and faced the fear of failure head on. Yet, here we are standing tall, a testament to our unwavering determination. The struggles we have faced along the way have shaped us into the individuals we are today. As we bid farewell to these familiar halls, we must remember that our education extends beyond the walls of the school. Education is not confined to textbooks, lectures, and exams. It's a lifelong journey of continuous learning and growth. Each experience we encounter, each person we meet, holds the potential to be our greatest teacher. And I really hope that we never lose sight of this fact as we embark on our journey, to, or sorry, as we embark on the next phase of our lives. Promotion is not merely about academic achievement. It's about the values we've engraved into our minds, the character we have developed, and the relationships we have cultivated. Each of us has a unique story, a narrative woven with triumphs and setbacks, laughter and tears, and countless moments, sorry, countless moments of self-discovery. Our paths may have been different, but today they converge in this moment of unity. Today we celebrate not only our academic accomplishments, but also the extraordinary individuals we've become. Now, as we stand before a new beginning, the world lies before us, brimming with limitless possibilities. The road ahead may be uncertain, but let us embrace the unknown with courage, resilience, and an unwavering belief in ourselves. We are armed with the knowledge, equipped with the skills, and bound by the indomitable spirit that courses through our veins. In closing, I want to express my deepest gratitude to everyone who's been part of this incredible journey. First and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to our dedicated teachers and mentors. You've invested countless hours, challenged us to reach new heights, and nurtured our intellectual curiosity. Thank you for instilling in us not only knowledge, but also the tools to think critically, to question, and to dream without limits. I would also like to thank my family, who has sacrificed so much to provide me with opportunities and has been, guide, been my guiding light in the darkest of moments. Thank you for your belief in me, because it's been such a crucial component in my success and achievements. I would also like to thank my friends for being so supportive and caring this entire journey. As we bid farewell to this chapter of our lives, let us carry the memories, the lessons, and the friendships forged within these walls forever. Sorry, within these walls in our hearts forever. I'd just like to congratulate all of my fellow classmates on our promotion to high school. It's been an honor to be able to share this journey with each and every one of you, and I wish you all the best as we move on with our lives. Thank you, and may our future be filled with endless possibilities. Our third valedictorian this afternoon is Mr. Marvin Shim. <laughs> Marvin joined the North Tustin campus in kindergarten and stands out as an incredible student and even more importantly, as an incredibly respectful young man. We know that Marvin is destined for big things in whatever endeavor he takes on. Please help me welcome Mr. Marvin Shim. As Malcolm X once said, education is a passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who are for it today. Today is a turning point in our lives, a monumental stepping stone that will prove crucial for the rest of our journeys. The preparation we make today, the agony and pressure that we endure today will ensure a better tomorrow. And we could not have done this without the support, support of our hardworking parents and dedicated teachers. They owe, us no, they owe us nothing, but they've done so much for us. We have spent these past years walking these familiar halls, greeting every schoolmate that passes us by. But now, we must travel onwards. No doubt the education opportunities we have had the luck of having has, prepared, has sufficiently prepared us for our adventures in high school. We have learned, laughed, and matured together. And for some of us, we continue our journey together. But for others, we go alone. Yet these rela relationships we have made here today will never fade. Perhaps memory may fail, 
but intuition and insti instinctual behavior cannot go away since it is hammered into our hearts. The bond we make so early in life rarely collapses, and this is but another testament to our strength and dedication to a brighter day tomorrow. But today does not, does not just concern reflecting over our past, but it's also about what we will find in our future. Soon we will enter hallways that will be quite unfamiliar, open doors bearing names of new teachers, and shake the hands of people whose faces we have never witnessed. When we, when we reach this daunting place next year, the same place that was a destination for so many years now, we'll be starting over. This cycle will repeat in college, and afterwards, we will gain the liberty to map this unmapped future. We will grow more responsible, more older, more wiser as we age. The future seems so frightening now, like it's looming over us like a thundercloud. We cannot even guess what's occurring in the dark terminal. However, once we get to know the unknown, we will find that the night is nothing but a sign of the clear day afterwards. As I look over all the faces on the stage behind me on my right, I see not just who we are today, but the next generation's great contributors to the fabric of society. Every one of us can work to create a small portion of events, and in total, our contributions will amount to astounding feats. Often we look at the outside world for our heroes, but today I see these heroes right here among us. I see future doctors, politicians, scientists, athletes, and leaders amongst this world. We don't have to look far for such inspiration, and that we all have the potential to make a difference. Now I'm speaking to the class of 2023. Cherish your dreams as they are the blueprints of our achievements. Life is what we make it. When you leave here today, celebrate what you have accomplished. Then look forward in anticipation for the coming experiences. Success is not final, and neither is failure fatal. Live today, dream of tomorrow, and always, always reach for the stars. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, our fourth valedictorian this afternoon is Miss Sophia Zhao. <laughs> Sophia joined the North Tustin campus in third grade and has been a kind leader ever since. The time spent this year with Sophia as a leader of the Zhao family has shown her growth not only with her character, but also with her words. Please help me welcome Miss Sophia Zhao. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as we stand here, we find, ourselves, we find ourselves at the pinnacle of this educational journey. It is an absolute honor and privilege to address you all on this momentous day, and I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the individuals who have played a significant role in our growth throughout the years. First and foremost, let us take a moment to express our deepest thanks to our remarkable teachers and mentors. You have served as our beacons and propelled us to the students that we are today. I would like to thank my math teacher, Mr. Whitlock, who always welcomes us during his extensive office hours and demystifies all complex mathematical concepts for us to understand. Also, my literature and English teacher, Ms. Patterson, who has sparked in us an appreciation for writing and reading. The insightful discussions you led have pushed my critical thinking skills to new heights. Next, our history teacher, Mr. Wynn, who not only brings history to life in his lectures, but engages the entire class with lighthearted banter. Our Spanish teacher, Mrs. Aguilar, who always found interactive activities for us after pages of grammar and vocabulary. Mr. Ritterban, our science teacher, who made learning science not only educational, but incredibly fun as well. Next, I would like to thank my debate teacher, Mr. Hughes, who was instrumental in my growth as a debater. Through an instruction on the art of effective communication, I was able to grow from a clueless sixth grader to the much more experienced debater I am today. Also, our PE teacher, Mr. Trin, who incorporates various activities and games in every class that not only challenges physically, but also fosters a sense of camaraderie among our classmates. Finally, I would like to thank all members of the administration, Dr. Mon, Mr. Clovis, and countless others who have been the driving force behind the scenes, ensuring that our school functions smoothly and providing us with a nurturing environment to learn and grow. I would be remiss if I did not mention all the other incredible junior high teachers, who, although I had never had the honor of being in their class, are always incredibly kind to me and greatly appreciated by all my classmates. So thank you to all you all as well. 
Additionally, to every teacher who has ever taught us in elementary school or elders of middle school, even though most of you might not be here physically today, we carry with us the immeasurable wisdom and influence that you have bestowed upon us. To our families who have given us unconditional support and love, we owe gratitude that words alone cannot express. You have always reminded us of our potential and encouraged us to reach for the stars. We will be forever grateful for the love and support you have showered upon us. So mom and dad, thank you. Finally, I want to acknowledge all my friends and classmates, because looking back, it's the shared memories that truly stand out. Whether they were late night study sessions, exhilarating victories on the sports field, countless debate tournaments, or simply the laughter that echoed throughout our classrooms, these moments have shaped us, and they wouldn't have been the same without you all. Today, we stand on the precipice of an unknown future, about to embark on a journey that will be filled with twists and turns and triumphs and setbacks. Let me assure you all, our Fairmont school years have not only provided us with the education of books and equations, but also taught us valuable love lessons, lessons of perseverance, lessons of collaboration, and lessons of the power of community. In closing, I would like to say, Class of 2023, congratulations on this remarkable achievement. Let us make our mark on this world, and let us never forget the incredible journey that has brought us to this moment. Thank you. Before we continue with our Joanne Allison Citizenship Award, I realize now after doing the run through this morning that there is a part of this ceremony that I forgot to go over. Uh, one of the traditions here at North Tustin is the passing of our gavel to our former ASV president. So can we give another big round of applause to Ms. Ava Hoover, our 2022-23 ASV president. The Joanne Allison Citizenship Award is given to two eighth grade students each year who demonstrate outstanding citizenship at school on a daily basis. The award is named after Joanne Allison Still, who models, modeled this citizenship as a teacher and administrator on this campus for over 30 years. Our very own Allison Hall is named after her. On behalf of Mrs. Joanne Allison Still, I am honored to present this award to William Yuan and Diva Sarhinejad. Mr. Clovis will now present the David R. Jackson Leadership Award. The David R. Jackson Leadership Award is given to an eighth grade boy and girl at promotion who display exceptional leadership skills, which as you can see today, all of these eighth grade students portray. These students must be involved with two activities such as ASB, athletics, debate, or pentathlon in both seventh and eighth grade, and they must remain in good ad academic standing at all times. The recipients this year have definitely been outstanding leaders and examples for all. They have invo involved in ASB, NJHS, and sports, just to name a few. They have been on the director's honor roll every trimester and both want to be remembered as students whose kindness touched many. This year's David R. Jackson Leadership Awards go to Aiden Cho and Serene Pooney. North Tustin campus started tradition of recognizing their outstanding efforts in our arts program. This award is named after our former art teacher, Ms. Yvonne Devane. This year's award is going to a student who has shown leadership and friendship to her classmates. Thank you to those artists who will continue to help create beauty and grace on our campus. Congratulations, Ms. Mahika Singh.
And now, the good part. We'd like to begin with a presentation of diplomas. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for each graduate as their name is called. Aiden Cho. John Comfrey. Camille Poulon. Well done. <laughs> Sachi here. Ava Hoover. Yeah. Emily Ho. Yassine Ismail. <laughs> Haley Kim. Jamie Kim. <laughs> Ethan Lee. Frank Lou. <laughs> Eli Lundy. Bennett Luo. <laughs> Roham Mashayaki.
Matthew Ole. Serene Pooney. <laughs> Ishan Reddy. Adeline Rodriguez. <laughs> Diva Sarhinajan. Marvin Shin. <laughs> Mahika Singh. Jackson Tanner. <laughs> Evan Trin. Claire Yu. <laughs> William Yuan. Sophia Zhao.
Eighth graders, I am proud to announce that you have met all of the requirements established by Fairmont Schools. It's my honor to officially promote you to ninth grade. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2023. At this time, will Camille Poulon please join me at the mic? On behalf of our eighth grade class, we'd like to thank you for joining us in this evening's celebration. Once again, well done, class of 2023. You all are welcome to stay for cake and light refreshments. Once again, thank you. Thank you. 